Good morning, and welcome to worship with us on this Palm Sunday. I think the things related to Palm Sunday in a few moments will come up on the screen, just so that we can be reminded that today it is Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week, the day we celebrate Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And in the book of the prophet Zechariah, Chapter 9 and verse 9, we read, Sing loudly, people in Zion. Shout, people in Jerusalem. Look, your king comes to you. He will save you because he does everything well. But he is quiet and riding on a donkey. Now, we are glad that we're able to be together for this important day in the Christian calendar. I'm not sure if we are going to shout at this point, uh, like the prophet told the people of Jerusalem to do, but we are certainly going to sing. So I hope that you're going to sing loudly, as the prophet said to the folk that they should do, because we're going to sing the song the band have just played. All glory, Lord, and honor to thee, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Thou art the King of Israel, thou David's royal son, who in the Lord's name comest, the King the blessed one. So I invite you to stand if you can, and we're going to sing all the verses straight through, please, bandmaster. Song 135, for those who like to follow it in their songbook. Thank you. <laughs>
be to the King. Please be seated, and Cheryl's going to come now and bring us our announcements for today. Good morning. It is lovely to see you all here again today on this lovely, beautiful Sunday. I hope you've all received your bulletins. Um, in there, we have all the dates and times and passcodes that you need for all the various things that are happening during the week. It's lovely to see Lieutenant Colonel Karina here from, she is a territorial, I'm going to shorten it, TPWM for Spain and Portugal. And she's responsible for pinching Sarah and Edgar every now and then to lead councils or do a course. But you're very welcome. I'm so glad that you can worship with us today. Next week, um, if you are here at this time, you'll have missed most of the meeting. The clocks go forward next week. They spring forward, so don't forget that. During, I don't expect you to get up at 2 o'clock and put your clock forward then in the morning, but be aware that what is 9 o'clock the night before will not be 10 o'clock the next day. Please be aware to change your clocks. Thank you to all those that gave monetary donations for the Easter eggs and Kids Alive um, to take up to the Minster. Um, I understand there was a really good assembly on Friday. Um, we had Sarah and Anne, no, not Anne, Sarah, John and Edgar and Karina, I think went up to the school and gave out Easter eggs and Kids Alive to all the children up there. And that's a wonderful ministry that we've been able to share in. So thank you for those that made it possible by giving us some money towards it. You may well have seen in the bulletin that the funeral for Peggy Fincham will take place on Friday the 12th of April. And uh, this will be uh, primarily at the East Chapel in Croydon, at Croydon Crematorium at 3 p.m. And it will be followed by a celebration service here at 4.30 p.m. So that's 3 p.m. at Croydon Crem and then 4.30 here. Moving on through this week, um, Home League will meet on Wednesday at 10 o'clock for 10.30. It is Holy Week, as you know, and the topic this week is how important is forgiveness? Do come along and find out. Our Easter programme begins or continues on Thursday. We will be led by Lieutenant Co uh, no, they're not Lieutenant Colonels anymore. They are Commissioners. <laughs> commissioners Anthony and Jill Cottrell. And um, they'll be here on Thursday for our um, very informal music meditation. That starts at 7.30. So informal that you do not need to wear uniform. If you remember, it's civvies, because many people come straight from work on Thursday evening. On Friday morning, note the later start. It's 10.30. Um, and that will be for our Good Friday morning service. And that will be followed by an open air up at the town centre. On Saturday, we have the coffee morning. Um, and you will be given some coffee, refreshments and a hot cross bun in exchange for some yellow or white flowers and we will be decorating the hall on Easter Saturday ready for Easter Sunday and that always looks so lovely. If you can't come to the coffee morning and want to give a donation for the fl some flowers to either Judith Rowlands or Jan Harding, they will be gratefully accepted. Thank you in advance for that. Next Sunday, our Easter celebration morning will start here at 10 o'clock. And we will be led by Anthony and Jill. Also next Sunday, there is an opportunity to do uh, meet with other churches in the district. Um, there's going to be a, an Easter celebration over at New Life Church. And that starts at 7 p.m. And everybody is welcome to that. So 7 p.m. for an Easter celebration at New Life Church. Further on into April, we have um, Salvationist Publishing and Supplies coming to us for Wednesday and Thursday, 24th and 25th of April. Um, and if you can offer an hour to help um, there, then Sarah or Anne will be uh, pleased to hear from you. And um, so that will be here. The following Sunday, on Sunday the 28th, um, for the youth of the Corps, between 12 and 25 years old, you have an opportunity to have a taster session for the proposed new Divisional Youth Band and Youth Chorus. It starts at 2.45 and finishes at 7.45. The link to register for this is in the bulletin, so please follow it, and um, it will be a fantastic thing to do. And I'm sure I'll have a good day in the afternoon and evening of Sunday the 28th. And back to today. Refreshments will be available in the community hall following 
this meeting. Um, it's a lovely day, um, but I will take a judgment on the open air once we get to the end of the meeting. There is a timber practice following refreshments, and for these really beautiful flowers, Etama, we offer you our thanks, and I uh, hope you have a lovely birthday. Thank you for them. Thank you. Thank you for listening. So this morning, I'm going to invite you to listen and read the Bible reading as it comes up on the screen. So children, it said, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Did you people read that as well? I'm glad you did. You're nodding at me. I actually am going to tell the children the story again, but from this Bible, because it tells us really simply. Jesus said, bring me a donkey to ride on. He said, What's, what noise do donkeys do? Go on, tell me. Eat all. Can we do that? Eeyore, 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 yes. Somebody asked me if the donkey was actually going to come today. He hasn't yet presented himself, so I don't think so. And he told them where they were to find the donkey. So his friends brought him a donkey, and the donkey came, and the donkey was there. Can you see him? He's sort of around here. So we're just patting him on the head now. So Jesus climbed on the donkey's back. Eeyore, eeyore, said the donkey as he climbed on his back and they went down the hill into Jerusalem. And what noise would the donkeys, what do you call them? They're not shoes, what are they? What is, heels, yes. What noise would the donkey's heels make? And Fincham, what noise would the donkey's heels make? Stuart Fincham, what noise would the donkey's heels make? You don't know. Well, I'm glad the children know because they're doing it down here. Something like that, wasn't it, B? People had palm branches on the road in front of the donkey. So they got big palm um, um, leaves and trees. And I think we have some palms around today somewhere. Do you think we've got... What do you, what do you bet? Do you want to pick up a palm? Because they all had palms. And then they came and they laid down the palms and their clothes along the road. And they praised God and shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, hooray! Jesus, yes, Jesus! Oh, wow, it's so good to see you. Hosanna, Hosanna. So I'm going to invite you to that. It, it makes you want to get up and sing as you listen to this story, doesn't it? And praise and dance and have your own palm trees and leaves to wave. Jesus is coming to town. So let's do that. The songsters are going to help us. They're going to come quickly and stand here around the piano next to John Swansbury. And as they do, I'm going to invite you children to help me. I need your help this morning. The reading said that people lay down their cloaks, they cut off branches and leaves to wave. Well, we have a road of cloaks here. 
It's not a disorganized mess left over from the well. It is actually a road that's been put up here for us, a road of cloaks. And we're going to invite the children to come and to wave their branches and walk along the road, right? And you are all going to be part of the crowd and you're going to join the songsters in singing, make way, make way, make way, because Jesus is coming, okay? So are you all ready? You follow the songsters. I mean, you can watch the children because I know you will. But the words are on the screen. You can sing away. The songsters are going to help us. And we're going to sing, make way, make way, because Jesus is coming to town on his donkey. The children are getting ready here. The songsters will lead us. Please sing along. Away we go. Thank you, songsters. Stand if you want to. Or come and pick up a palm if you want to and take part. If you've got an instrument, play it. Make way for Christ the skin in splendor your eyes may burn. Lovely. Thank you very much, Songsters, for helping us with that. Thank you, you, part of the group that was there for singing that with us. Thank you, everybody. A true celebration. Thank you, especially to our children who made it so vivid for us. Jesus rode triumphantly on the donkey. He's acclaimed as king. And many times we celebrate this Palm Sunday inside our four walls in the church. But do we remember that really Jesus is coming into a city and not a church, not the temple? Do we remember that before he came, he had wept for the city? Because that was where he was going. And it was a city that he loved. Previously, we read in Luke chapter 13, 34, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Jesus knew that a lot was going on in the city. 
The city had difficult situations. The city had people in need. The city had politicians that were not doing the right thing. The city had problems with its budget. The city had people that put their own interests over the interests of others. So as we keep our minds on the idea of Jesus coming to a city, to people living through different challenges and the most diverse situations, we ask the question this morning that's going to come up on our screen. What are the areas the King of Kings needs to bring change to in our city? What are the things in Croydon or in our neighbourhood, or where we live, or with the people that we deal with, where God needs to intervene. Well, we have some leaves here, and we have some pens, so we can write on the leaves. And I'm going to invite Lisa to play to us, and I'm going to invite you, as you think about this, as you think about Palm Sunday and Jesus coming to the city, imagine him coming into our city and we've all shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, and it's all wonderful. But what are the things and where are the places that we need Jesus to be in in our city? What are the things that need to be to have his intervention? What are the things, the places where he needs to be in our city? It could be that it's um, in our neighbourhood. It could be that it's in our school. It could be that it's somewhere else that we're thinking about in our minds. It could be where the asylum seekers are or where the homeless. What are the situations where we need God to intervene? Aren't we lucky that we just have time and space this morning to pray, to think? But also I invite you to come and to be able to write on here, on one of these leaves as we remember Palm Sunday, and to put it here together with all these other ones that are already here. I'm going to start us off. And as we listen to the music and words are going to come up in the screen, we've got space and time for a private time just to meditate and think, where does Jesus need to come to? Where does he need to be? Let's put it here. And then the words of a beautiful chorus or Hail the Lamb are going to come up. And then after we're going to sing, but take this time to think. Jesus isn't coming into Jerusalem to a church. He's coming to a city as he is today. feel free to come and put yours
so representative of our thoughts and prayers and maybe you in your mind have thought of something not necessarily it's here but you have thought of it so we want to bring all these thoughts together before the Lord this morning we thank you Lord that we can bring these things to you we thank you that you rode into Jerusalem a city you didn't come to a church but to streets and byways and people and when we pray that we want your kingdom to come and your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, we're praying that you will intervene in these situations that we've put here. And it could be that there's a part for each one of us to play in this. So we ask that you help us to see what is our place and to do what you would have us to do. And that you would help us to be salt and light in our neighbourhoods, where we live, in Croydon, in surrounding areas. And wherever my friends who are listening on the screen live too. And we pray this in your name. Amen. 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 Now, over these last few days, as um, Cheryl said, we've had the privilege of having Karina with us. Now, I first met Karina in Mexico. As you know, we sort of follow in different places and meet people in different places. Karina came to Mexico for a a safeguarding child protection event, and that's where I met her. I was told to take her around and visit Mexico City. Then after that, we went to work in Argentina, and um, we worked in the same department together, so that was a bit of an extra thing. And this week, she's been here in London for the General's Consultative Council that's met at Sunbury Court. So I said, well, I always go to you. This time you need to come to us because people need to know the face of this lady and the other people that we always go to see. So I invited her this morning to share with us part of her testimony, which she's going to do now. Thank you, Karina. Thank you. And she's going to speak in Spanish because English isn't her first language, but I'm sure um, that will be okay with you people by now. (laughs) It's a great privilege this morning to be able to share my testimony. Keep keep with me. (laughs) My testimony with you and know the beautiful work you do in the on corps in this area, in this neighborhood. Um, what you do is blessing for this neighborhood. Believe it. Mm. Firmly believe it. Mm. Because the word of God does not return empty. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Um, but comes to fill full God's purpose. Isaiah 55, 55 11. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's the same with my word, it says in Isaiah 55, 11. I sent it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to and it will prosper everywhere I send it. Okay, ahora en español. <laughs> Me too, Sarah. Okay. Nací en Argentina y desde pequeñita crecí en los caminos de Dios en el ejército de salvación. I was born in Argentina and since I was a child I was brought up in the ways of the Lord in the Salvation Army. Entregué mi vida a Cristo a los nueve años. I gave my life to Jesus when I was nine years old. Pero a los seis años entregué mi vida para ser un oficial del ejército de salvación. But before that, when I was six, I'd already given my life to the Lord to be a Salvation Army officer. Todo fue un proceso, un camino y un aprendizaje para mí. It was all a process, a journey for me. Y progresivamente Dios comenzó a mostrarme su voluntad. And slowly God began to show me his will for my life. Él fue eh, manifestando su gracia preveniente en mi familia. He showed his prevenient grace in my family. Y él fue revelando poco a poco su propósito para mí. And bit by bit he showed me his purpose for myself. Y a los 18 años entregué mi vida para servirle como un oficial en el ejército de salvación. And when I was 18 I literally gave him my life 
to serve him as an officer in the Salvation Army. Decidí iniciar lo, a prepararme para ingresar a entrenarme como I un oficial. I started preparation uh, to be trained as a Salvation Army officer. Okay. Y a los 20 años firmé mi pacto de entregar mi vida a Dios a tiempo completo. And when I was 20, I signed my covenant saying that I would um, follow the Lord and serve the Lord um, full time. Decidí continuar caminando mi camino de fe con él. I decided to continue my journey of faith with him. Siendo una oficial en officer, mi territorio. In our territory. Decidí entregarle todo lo que yo soy, todo mi futuro. Decidí poner en el altar de Dios mi futuro, mis talentos, todo lo que yo era en ese momento. I decided to put at the Lord's feet all that I was at that point in time, my talents, my gifts, mm -hmm. all that I was at that point in my life. Confié en su voluntad para mi vida y lo que él podía hacer por mí y a través de mí. I trusted my life to him and what he could do in me and through me. Y hace un poco más de 30 años que sirvo al Señor con mucho gozo. And so it's just over 30 years since I've been, while I've been serving the Lord. And con mucha pasión y alegría. Passionately and with a lot of joy. Dios ha sido bueno todo el tiempo conmigo. God has been good to me all the time. Nunca me ha abandonado, siempre me ha alentado y ha sido fiel. He has never left me, he's always cheered me up and he's always been faithful. No siempre ha sido fácil para mí. It's not always been an easy road. Desde aquel día que entregué mi vida completamente al Señor. Since the day that I gave my life completely to the Lord. A veces he dudado, he tenido miedo. Sometimes I've had doubts, sometimes I've had fears. He hecho preguntas a Dios. I've asked God questions. No sabía qué hacer ni cómo hacer. Many times I didn't know what to do or how to do it. Muchas veces quise rendirme también. Quiso. Rendirme. And me, but many times also I wanted to fall again at his feet. Pero Dios siempre me recordó que él estaba ahí para mí. But God always reminded me in whatever situation that he was there for me. Que no estaba sola. I wasn't alone. Y que él estuvo conmigo desde el primer día. And that he was with me right since the very first day. Él sigue trabajando en mí. He continues to work in me. Él sigue trabajando en mí porque me ama. He continues to work in me because he loves me. Y él me ama todo el tiempo. And he loves me all the time. En todas las circunstancias. In all circumstances. Y está ahí para mí. And he's there for me. Un texto que en estos últimos tiempos Dios trajo a mi vida es One of the texts that the Lord's brought to my attention over the last few days is Hebreos 11:27. From Hebrews 11:27, which says it was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. Okay. I decide on going with him. <laughs> yes, so I'm ongoing with him. Decido continuar yendo hacia adelante como Moisés. I want to continue to move forward just like Moses did. Todos los días. Every day. Veo cosas difíciles a mi alrededor. Sometimes I see difficult things around me. Muchas veces no sé cómo hacerlo o qué hacer. Many times I don't know what to do. Pero me desafío. But my challenge a continuar caminando como is, viendo aunque no lo veo is always to continue journeying towards him even though i don't always see him mi fe es puesta a prueba my faith is put to a test él está he's there él está en control de todo he's in control of everything él es mi guía he's my guide él es mi aliento he's my encouragement él es mi todo he's everything to me porque él me ama because he loves me y yo me entregué a él hace tantos años. And I gave my life to him so many years ago. Pero él se entregó primero por mí. But before I gave my life to him, he gave his life for me. Que el Señor les bendiga. May God bless you. Thank you, Karina. Thank you for sharing those words with us this morning. And the songsters have already been here, but we're going to ask them to come back now, and they're going to share with us a beautiful song, He is Exalted. Thank you, songsters.
Hej Volce. Thank you so very much for reminding us. He is exalted. That's what Palm Sunday is all about, isn't it? And we're going to have the opportunity to give our offering now. And as we do, I'm going to invite you to sing once again. So you've got to do various things. Get your offering ready. You can do that now. And then we're going to sing. And we're going to stand to sing. So you've got to do lots of things at the same time. But I'm sure you're very capable of doing that. We're going to sing Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. We heard the, those, that song uh, being played while we were listening to our Bible reading. So please join in, stand together, sing, give your offering, do everything at the same time. And the band are going to help us as we sing together. <laughs> band. We're going to have to sing that again, I'm sorry, because everybody was so busy with their collection that they couldn't really sing Hosanna. And now they're all free, so they can clap, they can sing the offerings over. Can we do it again? Is that all right? Yeah, no, why not? Let's sing Hosanna, Hosanna. Thank you so much, band. There we go. Now, this time, guys, help me out. Come on. <laughs> Thank you. 
Lord, we thank you this morning that we're able to bring our offering to you. We thank you because you have given us so much. We don't deserve what you give us. But we thank you because you continue to bless us. And we thank you that this morning we have the opportunity of giving back to you. So bless our offerings and use it for the extension of your kingdom here in Croydon, we pray. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Thank you, everybody. That was a wonderful scene. You remember in our first Bible reading from Zechariah, the prophet said, sing loudly. So, I mean, couldn't leave you just singing any old how, could we? That beautiful song of Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Well, we're privileged to have our band with us this morning as well, and they're going to bring their message to us now, just as I am. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, man, for this moment, for this blessed moment. One of the best appropriate songs and pieces that you have chosen for a meeting, especially with the theme that we are approaching this morning. How great it is to be together on this Palm Sunday. Together in one intention, together in worship. Although we are not together in the same place, but literally, literally around the world as we are uh, transmitting and uh, 
streaming online. Wherever we are, we are together because the Lord uh, is with us in adoration and we are in expectation of perhaps being <coughs> comfort by what God has to bring us or inspire or maybe challenged, but we are together waiting for a blessing that God has especially for us this morning. Over the last weeks in Lent, we have been thinking about habits and making a habit of remembering and hope and prayer and kindness and unity. As we have been doing this, we have thought of God as the one who is always available to us and who help us to create these habits within ourselves without a, any conversation that we had. Lieutenant Colonel Karina was also mentioned about that, the availability of God towards his life and she, her life and how she experienced that in her own life. He is the God, Emmanuel, the God who is with us. And this is confirmed by Jesus himself in his last words when he gave us this promise, uh, or he gave this promise to his disciples that reach out to us as well. Go and make disciples of all nations. And surely I am with you always. I am with you always to the very end of the age. So God is available and willing all the time to help us and support us so that we can be transformed day by day to become the best we can be for him and for those around us. Interesting enough, though, the Palm Sunday story's focus is actually the other way around. It is all about human beings being available to God. Had you ever thought of it in that way? Well, let's see why. As we know, Jesus was all about relationships, meeting with people, talking to them, getting to know them more, and sharing with them about what God wanted for their lives. Jesus had some interesting connections with families who lived on the outskirts of Jerusalem, for example. There are Mary, Martha, and Lazarus' home, for instance, in Bethany. That was somewhere he stopped by on different occasions. Then, there is the place where they ate the Last Supper. This clearly belonged to someone it's to someone, someone he knew, although no name is mentioned. Then, on the day, on the very day we are celebrating today, journey into Jerusalem for the last time, Jesus obviously knew a family who would lend him their coat. The disciples only had to say, it is for the master. And that was enough for them to be able to make use of the, this precious possession. Having borrowed a donkey, Jesus then needed to borrow his disciples' cloaks to make that unique occasion complete. So think about it. It is a rather unusual picture. A king who has known of his own resources and needs the generosity of his subjects before he can complete his mission. We could say then that he is counting on others making themselves available to make the mission happen. Of course, it is not that he cannot do it alone. His entry is entirely self-sufficient. He can do anything he wants to do, but he chooses 
to need us. He chooses to ask us to do things. He chooses to rely on us for things that we can offer, for him to use for his mission. And that is what he continued to happen ever since. That is what has continued happened ever since. You know, every day of the week, Jesus offers us opportunities to make something available to him that he can use for the mission and extension of his kingdom. And we can be very practical in our example today and in the uh, things that I'm going to mention now. For example, every Sunday, yes, every Sunday after the meeting here, he offers us the great opportunity to make our time and talents available to him up in the open air of the high street. He wants to use us to play instruments, be they metal ones, the timbrels, or the guitars, or even our voices. But he also wants to use people to engage in conversation and to have the opportunity to tell others about the good news they discovered for themselves. The, opportuni the opportunities are there. Can you be available and help me with this? Asked Jesus. Every Monday, for example, to give you another example, he offers new opportunities for people to be available to support the homeless that come to the well. Can you make some tea or coffee or chat or give out cakes to show my love and attention to them? Can you be available and help me with these practical asks, tasks? Jesus asks. If uh, Sunday or Monday it's a bit difficult, well, we can have Tuesday and Wednesday. Can you lend me your basic English skills to help the people that come from abroad and need to learn English on Tuesdays and Wednesdays morning, Wednesday mornings? Can you be available to help me? Jesus asks. Can you select clothes or food? Can you help me on the computer? Can you talk to people? Can you lend me your garden or driving skills? Can you donate a bit of your money? Can you offer some of your weekly time? And so on. Can you be available for the mission where you are? And that's just to give you some examples of things that opportunity that happens in this building, but there are much more outside. Is Jesus asking us to offer things we don't think could, be, could possibly be of any use to him? How willing are we to put our abilities, possessions, and resources at God's disposal? Or are we just waiting for him to give us what we want all the time? Are we always saying, God bless me, God bless us, Lord, but don't ask me anything. Don't ask me to do anything because, well, you know, is that what is happening? If we go back to the text, it is interesting to observe that it is not just Jesus' acquaintances that were ready and willing to support him. As he rode into Jerusalem, we read of crowds celebrating his coming and joining his case, or his cause, sorry. We read in Mark chapter 11, verse 9, they proclaimed his, him Messiah and shouted about his kingdom coming. Now the crowds may have gathered and some of them may even have started off as cur cur curious bystanders. 
But that seemed to change as Jesus got closer. It seemed they wanted to do more and than just shout, Hosanna, make way. They took off their cloaks and laid them on the road. Maybe that was to soften the ground for the jittery young colt. But maybe it was also an expression of their gratitude, their acknowledgement, their joys in seeing Jesus come into the city in that way, on a donkey. We have put some clothes and palms on the floor here today as symbolized these However, we need to understand what it means for someone to take off their outer cloak in those days. Most of us today buy coats of the hungers. Loads of them are made in factories in various parts of the world. And we just go and choose the one we like and buy it by color, by style, whatever. However, in those days, your outer cloak was one of the most valuable things you owned. With no factories and production lines, each outer cloak would have been handmade, unique to a person. And the color and the way the person wore it would have in some way reflected their own personality who they were. So the folk are laying down something precious to them when they lay down their cloaks. This is really a symbolic gesture, a laying down of who they were. They were putting themselves out there for the cause of Christ. So that unique occasion brings us to consider other, another important truth about our relationship with God. More than the things we can do, more than out, uh, our hopefully good habits and gifts and talents, God actually wants us. God actually wants us. He is here with us. He wants to make use of our ability and our talents and the things we have to offer. But more than that, he wants us as we are. He wants us to make him our priority. Not only to give him our attention and do things for him, but to recognize him as our Lord. We have the benefit of knowing how the Easter story continues, and especially how it ends. The real triumph is at the resurrection. Having laid down his life for us and conquered death. So his triumph entry into Jerusalem is not just about the shouting and the waving of palms. It is about laying down before him the most precious thing we have, ourselves and our own living. Many times I have mentioned this to the musicians, the band and the songsters, that God is really very interested in the excellence of the music they produce. But more interested than that, God is interested in the musicians they are. Because that's all about, that's what it's all about. So the Palm Sunday story is about our availability to God. On that very occasion, Jesus was showing his own availability also to his father. As Sarah mentioned already, entering Jerusalem was a dangerous, a dangerous occasion for Jesus. His ministry has angered some very powerful people. 
And he must have known he was on the way to something terrible. And yet, he went. He didn't hide away or flee to a different land or even avoid the city in his ministry. No. In being available to God the Father, he intentionally stepped into the cauldron of rage and vengeance. He knew he had to be willing to do the Father's will, and he was determined to fulfill it. He was determined to fulfill it. So also on this day, Jesus' friends and followers were ready to declare Jesus king of the coming kingdom, even though they might not have totally understood what that meant. And some had a bumpy ride ahead of denying and even abandoning Jesus. But that's what submitting our life to Christ is all about. It is not always a smooth upward road. We sometimes get entangled with the world along the way, our own self-preservation, our own desires take over many times and make us go off track. Yes. However, it is his kingdom that we are here to build. And it is Jesus the King we are here to serve. So friends, in conclusion, as we come to the close of the Lent period, this very reflective time, God gave us once again the opportunity to experience and start the Holy Week. Can I ask you, where do you stand in the crowd? Where do you stand in the crowd? Are you part of Jesus' friends and acquaintances that are ready to offer support and help? Or are we the people who walk with him, alongside him, as he enters Jerusalem, showing we are part of the group, we belong to Jesus? Just about that? Or are we part of the group that understand that he is the real king of kings, and we stand there in awe and take off our cloak? the most precious garment we have that covers us and protects us, and lay it down for the Lord to ride over and proclaim that he is the Lord of our lives and that we are totally available to him to use us, to ask what he will of us, to use our gifts, our resources, our talents, and to call us up and send us wherever he will for the extension of his kingdom. At the end of the day, that is what is all about, as we already mentioned. But it is a decision that only we ourselves can take. A decision that only we can take personally in response for all that he already has done for us. So that's my question. That's God's question for you today. Where do you stand? Where do you stand? There's cloaks here on the floor. We put some cloaks that were from like old plays maybe maybe probably like the ones that some of the people wore at that time like this and laying down of the cloak is my personal precious self we've got some modern ones along here too some more updated ones we've even got a salvation army one because even though we may belong and be part of that doesn't mean 
that we've necessarily given our precious self to the Lord. So this morning we have the opportunity to think about that. Maybe you'd like to come and pray. Maybe you need to think again about your precious self and where you stand and how available you really are if you've actually laid your life down for the Lord to let him use you as he wants to. So we have time and we have space. And if you'd like to come to this place of prayer to think about that or to bring one of these subjects that maybe you wrote here that that worries you to the Lord this morning or just to be with him, that's fine. So let's listen and let's pray as we listen to the song that's going to be sung. And let's act as well, because we can't just listen. We have to do something about what the Lord says to us. Take my life and let it be Consecrated, Lord, to Thee Take my moments and my days And let them flow in ceaseless praise Take my voice Set, let me sing always only for my king. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee, filled with messages from. Cause I am yours Even when the doubt sets in Even when I'm running in the opposite direction And I am yours When the night is dark and I can't see You're always standing next to me And I am reminded That I Cause 
as I am yours. Thank you, Lord, that you invite us to belong to you. Thank you because despite the things that we do or whoever we may be, you still want us to be yours. Well, all you want us to do is to be available and to be willing to give up ourselves to be yours so that you can use us day by day. So as we reflect on these things this morning and you coming into Jerusalem in that way and the way the crowd reacted, we just pray that you will help us to remember during this Holy Week what it's really all about, that you laid down your life for us, and that as your people, that's what we need to do day by day, give up self and be consecrated to you. Not just be the people that want to be receiving your blessings day by day, but being the people who want to be a blessing to others day by day because of our love for you. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for coming. Thank you for that day so many thousands of years ago. Thank you for being willing to lay down your life for us. In your name we thank you. Amen. 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 So being Palm Sunday, we couldn't really end in any other way except ex expressing how God is with us and how he reigns in us and how we want to continue to be with him. So I'm going to invite you to stand and we're going to sing our final song, a song of praise this morning. Lisa's going to help us on the piano. Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams, my darkest hour. Whatever's going through my mind or my life, just come and reign and be in me. So I'm going to invite you to stand together and we're going to sing this song with the piano and Lisa's going to help us. Thank you. Amen. Won't you reign in me again? And now our benediction. May Jesus, our King of kings, make his rule known 
in our lives. May we echo the crowds as Jesus entered Jerusalem who praised and celebrated this king even though they did not yet know the nature and scope of his saving plan. May the glory of our king give us strength and excite us with the reasons to worship even as we pray for his saving power over our world. And may the presence of the Lord be with us this week. May he help us to be available to him and may we offer our unique precious selves to him to be who he would have us to be. Amen. 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 May God bless you. Please join us for coffee. You are invited to do that. Thank you.